Oftentimes in God's word, we are giving a, given a preview of a future event. You know, sometimes these previews are called shadows. You know, picture a shadow being a, a fuzzy picture of a final revealing of a clearer image. So today, I want to dig deeper into a shadow of the beast. Uh, we're going to start in the book of John. And we're going to look at the Lord's Supper. This is John 13. And, and we're going to take a closer look at Judas. Judas Iscariot. And how Judas himself was a shadow of something much, much darker. Judas is a shadow of the coming beast. So, so let's dig deeper and take a look at this. If you look at uh, John 13, this is, this is verse 2. It says, During supper, this is the Lord's Supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him. So you see, the devil is already at work in the heart of Judas. Now, if we go over, it to, and we just continue in this, in, into chapter 13 here, and we look at verse 21. It said, When Jesus had said this, he became troubled in spirit and testified and said, Truly, truly, I say to you that one of you will betray me. Jesus knew this was going to happen. And he knew who it was. He, he knew this was the work of Satan. If we scroll down a bit here, and we look at verse 26, it says, So when he had dipped the morsel he took and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, after the morsel, now pay attention, Satan then entered into him. We have Satan entering Judas, indwelling in him. This is like almost a demonic possession by Satan himself. After the morsel, Satan then entered into him. And, and no other place in the Bible is, is someone referred to in this way as having Satan entering them. It says, Therefore Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. So Jesus knew he was about to be betrayed by Judas. And he told him to be about his business, basically. Now, if we go just a little bit further in the book of John... And we're going to get to chapter 17. Now, Jesus says something very interesting in chapter 17. John 17, this is his high priestly prayer. And look how this closes. And look at verse 12. While I was with them, he's referring to the disciples, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. And I guarded them, and not one of them perished, but the son of perdition, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. This son of perdition, this is, these are words that Jesus is using to describe Judas Iscariot, the son of perdition. Now, kind of keep that in mind. So we move forward to, the, to chapter 18, and, and let's, let's build on this. We read, we read about Judas betraying Jesus. Now, this was in the Garden of Gethsemane. So we have here in 18.2, Now Judas also, who was betraying him, knew the place where Jesus had often met there with his disciples. Judas then, having received the Roman cohort and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Okay, so we have... Judas, who, ha who has gathered a group of Roman, a cohort of Roman soldiers, and the Jewish religious leaders were there also. Jewish, Judas has assembled and gathered his own army to come against Jesus. Now they came with lanterns, torches, and weapons. They were ready to come against Jesus, assembled as, as one unit against him. Now we keep going. So Jesus, knowing all the things that were coming upon him, went forth and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am he. And I'll tell you what, there is power in the word of God. And we're going to see it here. And Judas also, who was betraying him, was standing with them. So when he said, when he said to them, I am he, Look what happened. They drew back and fell to the ground. 
this this army of Roman soldiers and Jewish religious leaders that were led by Judas, they fell to the ground at the power of, of the word of God, at the power of the words of Jesus. So, so we have this picture. Now, how could this be a picture of something much greater? Okay, so we want to turn to the book of Revelation. And we'll get turned there. And we're going to start in Revelation chapter 12. And I, I want to look here. Revelation 12, 3. This will be our base. It says, Then another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. And we're going to learn here real quick who or the identity of this great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. If we just skip right over to verse 9. And the great red and the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. So the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns is none other than the devil and Satan. Now, fast forward to chapter 13, and we're going to get into the beast. It says, Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. Now listen to the description of this beast having ten horns and seven heads. This is identical to that great dragon, that great red dragon. And we keep going. The whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. They worshipped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast. This is Satan giving himself and all of his authority over to the beast in the flesh. This is, this is the beast is Satan in the flesh. Now, remember, we, we just read earlier in the book of John about Satan entering Judas. It's, it's almost like a greater picture of that in the final fulfillment here. So, so let's, let's keep going. The Apostle Paul, he describes this beast. And we're going to go back into the New Testament a bit. We're going back to 2 Thessalonians. And we're going to go to chapter... This is chapter 2, verse 3. The Apostle Paul, speaking of this beast says, let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. And so he's calling him the man of lawlessness, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. He's, he's describing this beast. And look, notice the wording. The, the man of lawlessness and the son of destruction. Jesus referred to Judas as the son of perdition. You see, you see the striking similarities here? Okay, let's, let's keep going and, and we'll see even more similarities here. We're, we're going to go to, this is Revelation chapter 19, and we're going to start with verse 19. And, and picture the similarities of what we've already read about Judas. It says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. So this beast has assembled his army, the kings of the earth, to make war against Jesus. Just as Judas, he gathered his Roman army those soldiers and the Jewish religious leaders, his, his own version of an army that he led to come against Jesus. This is a greater fulfillment of that. And then let's read on. And the beast was seized and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire which burns with brimstone. Now, now, Jesus talked about Judas being lost. You know, Judas has has an eter has an eternal future in the fiery pits of hell, just as this as the beast does. Th these two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. Another another greater fulfillment. And look what happens after that. 
And the rest were killed with the sword which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. Just like Jesus, when he said to, the, to Judas's gathered army, I am he, and they fell to the ground. Jesus says the rest were killed with the sword. The, the word of God is, is the sword, which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And that is, that is power, power in the word of God. So this, this, this connection between Judas and, and the beast is another great example of a, a picture of something greater in the Bible. This time in, in Judas Iscariot, we have a shadow of the beast.